Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. Today is Thursday, August 19th. And if you live on this earth, you have mostly created something that maybe somebody else probably hasn't thought of. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But like, we as a species create and we innovate and we change and we make for the better of our species. A hundred years ago, we didn't have like big commercial airliners like, like we do today. We couldn't travel through the air. We had trains. We still do have trains and we use them all the time. We love trains still. But the air travel was one of the biggest accomplishments of mankind. Flying through the air, multiple people to travel. I'm not saying that, that uh, every achievement or every discovery or every thought has to be that big to make an impact. In fact, they could be some of the smaller ones. A small achievement, a small thought that could possibly shape the way that we think about certain things. This week's, you know, big, I, I mean, I haven't tried it yet or seen one like in person. But our boy, my boy, one of my uh, favorite people on the planet, I guess you could say he's a celebrity, Guy Fieri, the mayor of Flavortown, invented this new hot dog. And what it is, is if, if you haven't seen it, it's a hot dog weenie, or hot dog itself, wrapped up in this pie crust. And it's like a, it's, it's basically an apple pie hot dog. With the option of having like different like, this is like this apple mustard, a little bit of a, you know, crumb, crumbly stuff that you can put on it to add extra flavor, to really emphasize the apple pie part of it. I gotta tell you, I haven't tried it, but I really, really want to. Like it, it's gonna be like I need to get one of those and I need to put it in my oven, heat it up, and just absolutely, well, first of all, try it, and if it's amazing, devour it. I mean, absolutely devour because I'm not a huge pie guy. I mean, I, I I enjoy ice cream with certain pies, like whipped cream with certain pies. The, the whipped cream makes it, in my opinion, better. But with apple pie, man, man, that's my favorite pie. In my opinion, like that's like the only pie I will eat naked. Like not me naked, but like with nothing on it. No ice cream, no whipped cream. I don't need it. I just eat the apple pie. I like, I, I would, I enjoy them on it. But if, you know, I had to choose a pie to eat by itself or a pie for eternity, it would be apple. Now, I also like hot dogs. That could be an extraordinary burst of flavor in your mouth, I would assume. I would think. I mean, Guy Fieri is a genius, by the way. Now, I might be biased, but I just feel like that's going to be one of the bigger things that has ever been made. You can buy that at, you know, Costco. You can probably make that at a baseball game. It reminds me of fair food. Like fair, like like a like a gigantic, you know, what do they like dip like in a deep fryer, like an Oreo. Fried Oreo like type of thing. That's what it reminds me of. Like you something that you would get at like a carnival or a fair and just, you know, it costs like maybe like seven bucks. But you don't even care. You're just like, give me that food, man. I need some salt. I need some sugar. Let's just get it on. And I think that with that innovation, for him to actually make it and sell, you know, these on the market, is one of the best things that you can do, like, ever. You think of an idea and just do it. And maybe it's because he's Guy Fieri and he's like, yeah, I'm Guy Fieri. They'll buy whatever I make at whatever I put out. That could be that, or it could be really damn good. But I, there's another combinations out there that I've dappled with, and I've realized like, hang on, did we think about this before when it first began? Like when it first started, like you know, classic combinations like peanut butter and jelly. How did that form up? How did that happen? Who thought of putting first of all peanut butter? on bread, 
and then adding strawberry or grape jelly, jam, whatever you want to call it, and putting, you know, that as a sandwich. One of my favorite sandwiches of all time, by the way. Yeah, get some peanut butter, strawberry jam is my what I prefer. I also like grape. I enjoy both. And just absolutely devour it. One of the better combinations of all time. I mean, in my opinion, that and mashed potatoes and gravy got to be one of the top two. At least in my opinion. But how, how do you think those came about, though? They're like, oh, this needs something. Hmm. These potatoes are, they're good, but they need something. Like, what came first? Like, the, I, I would assume that the, the mashed potatoes came before the french fries, just because, you know, I think you could easily, like, make mashed potatoes, like, back in, like, way back, and then fries came along when you could, you know, obviously use frying oil, but I could be wrong about the origin of, of both of those, but, like, I would just kind of guess, educated or not educated, that uh, mashed potatoes would be before fries, you know, just as a hunch or an, a guess, I guess. And you think about another combination, a more sweeter one, which is peanut butter and chocolate. Now that, you know, how, you know how, how, I, how I discovered that, aside from the Reese's Cups and all that, which are, you know, amazing, but another, uh, um, what I also, like, got put onto those, uh, you know, for, again, was, if you've ever seen the movie The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan, the newer one, I guess you would say. They got Oreos and dipped them in peanut butter. That movie. And I thought, oh, that doesn't look that good. But in the movie, they're like, oh, it's amazing. It's so good. It's delicious. How has nobody else done that? Or like, I'm, I thought that I was the only one who did that. They, had, they played it off like it was some kind of, you know, weird type of flavor. Weird, like, combination. But mark my words, people. It is the classic peanut butter and chocolate combination that we all know and love today. But it's just, you can do it at home. And it's easy to make. And it's just, there's no effort into it. Really, you just buy peanut butter, buy Oreos, and there you go. You got it. And it is an incredible flavor. It's so easy. And you can just eat it all day if you want. You don't got to worry about, you know, buying making that shit at home, you can just buy it and do it. I mean, that's like all time for me, one of the best combinations of all time because it's so simple and just tastes good. Now, one of the newer ones that I've been, you know, seeing a lot lately, and if you've like been on the internet or YouTube or anything like you, maybe even traveled to eat a bunch of places, you might see that there's an item that's been like very, you know, popular within like the last maybe... Maybe eight years, maybe even a little bit more than that. I would say chicken and waffles has got to be like the number one mainly talked about main, you know, the hit the, the hit combination of food out there today. I personally have never tried it, but I would love to try it. I mean, I, I, I first of all, I'm a big fan of sweet and savory together. They They should always be, you know, it's always usually with those... Um, flavors, when they work, it's a perfect marriage. And when it doesn't, you can tell, and it's like, no, they shouldn't be together. They just should not be together. It's very simple, and you can tell as soon as you taste it. You're like, oh, this is perfect. Keep this together all the time. And then other times you're like, nah, not that good. Not that good. Like, for me, the ones I don't like, one of them is... Uh, Strawberry and chocolate. Not a fan. I don't know what it is. It's just I, I don't think that the fruit with chocolate really works all that well. Like I never just I never did because you could get like if you go to C's candies, you can get like these candies that have like a filling in it that's like a strawberry or a fruit. And you eat them and like personally I just don't like them at all. I don't think that the sweetness of the chocolate or the fruit just they don't mix together for me. They just seem like they're, uh, it just doesn't work. And I think that, you know, that applies when I eat a, a chocolate-covered strawberry. It just doesn't work. There's just something about it that the sweetnesses of both of them, they just, for me, they just don't mesh. And I, I just, I don't like them. And, like, 
you know, that that's not like the only one, but like, I mean, sometimes I can kind of get like annoyed or like you, you think that, um, you never, you think of, like, look at one, like, how did that even work? How does that work? Other times you can see, like, oh, that works. How did it not work before? Or not, not, how was it before that? Like, the creation of buttered popcorn. Like, I've had popcorn, like, buttered my entire life. Sometimes kettled. Sometimes, you know, sweetened. Other times chocolatey. You know, caramel. But I've always had it with something. Like, how how could you eat popcorn with nothing on it? I've I've never tried it. I would like to, but I I I don't think I would like it. I think it'd just be really really boring. Because even like if I have corn on the cob, you know, or if I make corn in a pot, you know, boil the water in it, you still put like butter, salt, you know, pepper, and then you even got like exotic corn like elote, where they put like mayonnaise and shit. I've never had it personally. They put, like, you know, hot sauce on it, mayonnaise, I think, cheese. You know, I've never had it, but, like, I feel like it's, it would be, you know, a burst of flavor. I don't know why I've never had it. I just, you know, never. I never thought of corn as a, like, a snack. Like, you would buy at, a, at like, a snack bar or, a, you know, like a, a food truck. Or if you want to go real, get real, a bicycle. <laughs> With a, you know, or like a little, uh, uh, you know, if you have been around like an area where there's a lot of, you know, tr- uh, street food, and then you just like buy it from like this modified bike with like a big old bin in it that you they actually make the, make the elote for you. But I've also seen, seen it in like a restaurant or something like that or like a more, you know, more formal, more fancier approach to it. And I always feel like that's kind of like not what it's meant for. Like, it's meant for as a street food. Like, you just buy it on the street, and that's where you eat it, and it's got, like, the better flavors there. But I feel like when they make it too fancy, like I've seen at some restaurants, it's like, I mean, I've seen it, you know, look more appetizing than what it is right there. And you just kind of think, like, oh, that food should have just stayed a street food, if that makes any sense. Like, if you th- were going to talk to me about, like, how a burrito became, like, a big you know, like, burst it out with Chipotle. And everybody was like, oh, we gotta go get a burrito at Chipotle. We gotta go to Chipotle and get a, a you know, a steak or chicken burrito. I would think that, like, no, why don't we just go to, like, a taco truck and get a burrito there? Like, that's just where I get them, or you make it at home. <laughs> or you go to a Mexican restaurant and eat there. I've never thought, like, in my life, before Chipotle was the thing, that they could make burritos... In a, in a way, like a fast foody, like Subway type of thing, ever. And now it's like one of the bigger restaurants in America, or even the world, maybe. I'm not sure, but at least in America, it's super popular. Because you can't deny the flavors there. And I'm, I am a, a true Mex, so like I've had Mexican food and all that, and I know what about burritos and all that I've had, you know, whether it be at a restaurant, you know, a taqueria, a taco truck, grandma's house, your mom's cooking. I've had it all, right? I. I'm well experienced in Mexican food, right? I get it. But it, you, at the end of the day, Chipotle still can kind of hit on, you know, certain levels. Maybe you don't want to go sit down at a restaurant. Maybe you don't want to go to a taco truck. Maybe you don't want to, uh, you know, have your you know, bother your grandma. What if you just want something fast and, you know, you crave that artificial... You, they say it's fresh, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know about that. If that's completely true. You know what you you crave that uh fast uh, quick uh corporate fast food type of thing. You go to Chipotle. You get a burrito. Me personally, like I understand why people do it. Burritos itself, in general, are just good. Like they have everything that you want in it. Got a tortilla, right? You got that starch. Add on more starch with the rice, protein with the beans and the meats. You can add you know cheese to it. Hot sauces, guacamole, sour cream, whatever you want, corn. I mean, it's very appealing to everybody. It's like appetite, really. If you don't want that, you can get sofritas if you're vegetarian or vegan. You know, if you don't want a tortilla, you can get a bowl. I mean, which basically is like more food, 
like actual food than like, getting the burrito. I th- I would assume because like, you know, the, the bowl is like deep and they actually put it through the, at the entire surface, and then even more so like in the bowl. I I would you know I would assume, but it's just like those flavors and those foods like nobody can really, you know, get away from them. They they taste good no matter don't no matter where you're getting it from. Again, whether it be like your mom's house, grandma's restaurant, taqueria, or Chipotle. Right? It's just like they've they've honed in on what Americans like and what Americans, you know, uh, you know, what we crave. So, you know, meaty, cheesy, uh, starchy, hearty food. Now, I'm not saying that Subway's not like you know, that either. I mean, you can get a cold cut combo there, a Black Forest Tam sandwich, spicy Italian. But let's face it, man. I mean, there is no way I, I can... I mean, I think a burrito outbeats a sandwich in today's world like maybe three out, three out of five times, I would say. Maybe more than half. Maybe if it was back in... 1980 it would be it would be like four out of five people would rather get a sandwich than a burrito but nowadays i think more people would get a burrito over a sandwich just because of the way of the the world works i think people are just kind of tired of sandwiches like because like why would you be tired right you would think about that well i can just you know go make a sandwich at home i can put lettuce ham turkey whatever oils and spices and I can buy all that at the store and it's super easy to cut you know mate or you know put together you know whether as a burrito you kind of gotta everything there is kind of cooked right you gotta cook the rice cook the beans cook the meat um get some fresh veggies or make some salsas you right you gotta make all these things you know you gotta put some care into them you gotta make sure that they're you know cooked right to perfection as best as you can and then you got to put it all in that tortilla, roll it all up, and then eat it. And also, for the, you know, also, you can't really make a Chipotle burrito, like, at home, really. For one, the, the, the tortillas that they have at the store are just not even comparable to the size of the tortillas at Chipotle. Now, I know, I'm sure that Chipotle's got, like, their own modified, you know, tortillas to be that big. And, you, okay, make sure you put it in the, you know, how they put it in the presser. Only put in the presser for like maybe like I don't know five seconds and take it out because if you don't do that, it's gonna shrink. That's just my guess. I mean, I could be completely wrong on that, but I just assume that if you if you don't do that correctly, it's gonna come out wrong. And you, you think about it like I couldn't make this at home. And that's a lot of work. I don't want to cook steak and beans and rice and get all that ready. Cooking a sandwich is much easier at home, and that's why I think that if you were to go out. And get like a, you got either a choice of Subway or Chipotle. They're going to choose Chipotle like maybe three or four out of five times. I I would assume that. Especially because, you know, the light that Subway's in right right now is just like, it's not good. And we got all this from combinations of food. Which is, you know, to the like, one of the number one combinations, I would say, you know, in my realm. Is rice and beans. It just it's not really you can't really beat it. The starch and protein all in one. Delicious. You can put that in a taco burrito, whatever you want. It just it, it just sings. That's a combination of love. Really does hit home all the time, really. Basically. And I think I, I, another one, ham and cheese, you know, that's pretty again basic, but good. But also kind of boring after a while. You know, you eat it so many times, you're like, oh man, like I, I like it, but it's like, give me something else. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe, you know, I just think that it's, you know, kind of boring. I mean, bacon and eggs is also a good one. Bacon and eggs is delicious. I mean, you think about it. How many times does your family make bacon? I would say more often than sausage, right? Like, sausage is, to me, like, it's just not made as often as bacon is. And for one, bacon just tastes better. Sausage is still good, though. Don't get me wrong. Sausage is good. But bacon is just, I mean, that that's just way, way better. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's got that savoriness, that fatty goodness. 
And then the cut of meat just tastes amazing. Like if you taste bacon, it tastes nothing like a pork chop. You know, nothing like a pork chop. I don't even know how that's possible, but it just doesn't. And like, I mean, I'm, 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 I don't care that it, uh, yeah, like, I'm not trying to figure out why it does or it doesn't. I'm just gonna eat it. Same with like a like um. Oh, what what was I gonna say? Uh, what what was that one? It's like sausage too. Like so, I know sausage has got like a bunch of seasonings and all that, seasonings and like spices and all that, but it still like tastes nothing like a pork chop. It could be my idiocy, like thinking like, oh well, yeah, because it's all seasoning and it's all like grounded up and all that. They're like yeah, I know that, but still, it's good. Also, if you haven't had, you know, tried like another big one was which was part of my growing up, especially in high school, was chili cheese fries. I never had these. I don't think I've ever had them until you get to high school, because there was this place right by the high school that you can just buy them like at lunch. Come in a nice portion. You know, get a lot of fries, a lot of, a lot of chili, a lot, and just the right amount of cheese. And it was just, and, and I'm talking about like, like nacho cheese kind of, you know, you know, drizzled all over. Like it was premium cheese. Not like the cheese you buy at the store. You got to like put, get out of the bag and put, shred it and all that and put it on there. And hopefully it melts. Hopefully your chili's hot enough so it melts. Right? It, it, everything was hot. And then when you finish at the bottom of it, it was just a big puddle of grease. Now, as a kid, you knew that it was, like, bad to eat that, but you still ate it. You didn't care. I also feel like, you know, not going to, you know, tackle on the the chili cheese fries, but, like, cheese and fries by themselves is also really, really good. Like, really good. And I got to tell you this, man. I got to tell you this. They, I mean, like, one of the bigger reasons I, why I'm talking about this, about the cheese fry thing, is because I'm kind of getting a little bored with them at Taco Bell. I'll tell you why. It's because every time that they make a new item at Taco Bell, you know, it's always paired with the nacho fries. And they can just make, like, maybe like a... What do they just have? Like a, uh, they'll bring black, like some kind of chalupa, which they already have, and then add it to the nacho fries. And then oh, another taco and add it to the nacho fries. Another burrito added to the nacho fries. I think they're holding onto these nacho fries way, way, way too long. Like, bro, they're just fries and cheese. Like they aren't even. They're not that groundbreaking. They're good. Don't get me wrong, but like it's like. We've I've had those, you know, before. And, like, it's just, like, it's becoming more of a thing that it's, like, these are almost like fries and ketchup to Taco Bell. Because, one, they can't, they, they're not going to serve ketchup at Taco Bell. There's no way that they will. Right? There, there's, like, I mean, I mean, I don't see why they couldn't, right? But, like, I mean, the, the nacho fry thing is just, like, a lock. You cannot get rid of that. You can't, you know, change that too much. People aren't going to buy it. You know, I saw that they got these new, like, nacho, not nacho, but taco fry bowl, which is, you know, a base of fries, ground beef, some lettuce, and some cheese, maybe a little bit of, like, tomatoes, you know, like a, like a taco salad, but, but with fries, like that. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to sell that, ma- that well, because the fries by themselves are just good enough. You don't gotta add all that shit to them. Now, I mean, like, I'm I'm not saying that you can't, but it's like I think that they're perfect without that. That, that they don't need, you know, the extra fluff or the extra flavoring. But I could be, you know, I I do like a nice taco salad. I I will say that with some chips and all that. I mean, that's good. I think that it could be good. But I I just don't think that Taco Bell, you know, with the nacho game, with Taco Bell. Aside from the Nacho Bel Grande, you know, they have all those variations of like, you know, loaded nachos, uh, extra loaded, extra media, the monster nachos, whatever they have. Those to me have never really been all that great. Why? Because like they're, there's, first of all, there's just a lot. And I, I don't think that they distribute the flavorings or, or like the, the sauces, the cheese, the beans or whatever. I think, I don't think that they 
distribute them, you know, equally. At least one that's, you know, that I go to that they just, I don't know, it's just not the best. And I feel like that at certain times, like I've had like many of them, they all just kind of taste the same. Whether it be chicken, I mean, not chicken, whether it be ground beef or steak, it all kind of tastes the same. And it's just, it, it just gets boring. I don't want it to be. I think that it could be better. But I do think that it's just a little bit of a, I wouldn't say like their biggest thing. Like their best menu. Like, in, in all honestly, in honesty, like, their menu is very, very bare. It's not like the best menu out there. It's actually really like pathetic if you look at other other fast food menus. Like they got like maybe seven or eight combos on there. And maybe like a couple like, you know, dollar menu things, a couple promotable promotion things, like a, a new box or a new something a new burrito or whatever, but like not a lot is going on at Taco Bell right now. Like their menu is just kind of I don't know, it's just withering away. Like it's just like it's it's just boring. And um this week that they 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 had some news out that they were gonna change the way that the drive through worked, and that they had like this they they put out this picture of this you know what it looks like to be like a dry new type of building design where the 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 kitchen looks like it's gonna be on top and it's gonna be supported by like four pillars and those pillars are actually just like you know windows for the drive through that you can place orders or do mobile or do an app or do delivery or whatever. And then that's how you would get the food, whether you'd be like a, you know, actually you make the order on the app, you go pick it up, or the DoorDash person or Grubhub or whatever does that. It's just like, it's very futuristic. I actually have a little bit of some questions of how that's going to work. Like, do the do the employees go in through the, uh, I don't know, the uh, uh, is there a base? Do they go up through the, through the windows at the drive-thru? Is there like stairs or an elevator there, I like, it's just, it's very, like, it's, there's not a lot of information, at least on this MSN, um, article from Men's Health, but, like, it's, there's not a lot of information on this, but, um, it just looks like it's, I don't know, like, I don't think that this is gonna be a gigantic hit, if that makes any sense, like, I just feel like it's, like, oh, well, yeah, it's gonna be cool at the beginning, I think, but once you, like, know that what Taco Bell has at the, at, you know, what they serve, it's just gonna be, like, okay, well, it's just Taco Bell, I mean, that's what I feel like for most places, especially Taco Bell. Like, it is, you know, I do love it, but at the end of the day, it is just Taco Bell. It's not like, you know, revolutionizing fast food, really. It's just revolutionizing how you get it or how you obtain it or how you order it, which, in my opinion, is not, you know, how these people make their money. They make their money by what kind of food that they have and what kind of, you know, new food that they have or new ideas that they have for their food. Uh, not really their buildings or their drive throughs So for me, it it is cool to see that. It is, you know, it does look futuristic. I mean, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to go there just to look at their buildings. I mean, this is going to debut in 2022 in New York, I believe, or uh, yeah, Brooklyn, I think that's what it said. Um, So like, I don't know, it could be, no, 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 Brooklyn Park, uh, Minnesota, my bad, not, not New York, Brooklyn Park, M- Minnesota in 2022 so yeah i mean this is going to be cool it's going to be interesting to see if it takes off if if, like more taco bells do this if they do i don't know like it's it just seems weird though because you're going to get like this floating if maybe at one angle there's like a car in your way of your view you might it might look like the taco bell is actually floating i don't know but it's just going to be weird to see it because it does look very futuristic it looks like it's like supposed to be a building that is like um, meant for people to access if you have like a floating car if that makes any sense like if if in the future we have floating cars and all that and floating I don't know platforms that you can just walk into like it just feels like that like the 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 higher um, uh, living is up in the air while the bottom tier living is like at the bottom of it is at the floor if you remember like in a Star Wars episode 2 when they first or episode the prequels well, you introduce like Coruscant, you have like all these floating, you know, hover cars and, you know, speeders and all that. And everybody's like up in the air and at the bottom of, you know, all those buildings, like where all like the gangs are, the bad living, the poor people are at. It kind of reminds me of that. Like we're kind of transitioning to like the higher people are up top and the lower people are on the bottom. That's just what I kind of see through this. I could be, you know, completely wrong on that, but it's just like I get those vibes of, 
you know, peop, the good people, the rich people down there, peasants down below. I don't know why I see that, but it's just like, I don't know. Th and that's just what I've been, you know, getting at. Again, I, I don't think that they're going to make that much money more uh, from this design alone. I think that they got to, you know, boost up their menu because, again, let me tell you, not good. Uh, not, 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 not my Taco Bell menu. I miss the quesarito being on the menu at the store. I don't want to have to order it on the app. I don't want to have to order um, certain drinks on an app or a certain box on the app. Like that, that is just so pathetic. I think that they got so into the app thing, into the app like um, business that they have to. They spend so much money on their apps that that their their food alone is not going to be able to, uh, you know, that you can order at the store is not going to be you know, enough to actually get them to, you know, pay for that app. They're going to have to say, oh, you can order, order, the, order the quesarito on the app only just because we put so much money in this app. You know, I don't know. I could be wrong. But yeah, Taco Bell's making moves in the restaurant look industry. Also, can we even sit in there? Like, it, it is above, like, a, you know, above the ground. So, like, not seeing any stairs or any, you know, doors really how to dine in is it just going to be for drive through is it or is what well, like is it even going to be like a legit restaurant or is it just going to be like a like a, a little rest stop where you can just order food on the go and that's it i'm not sure about that <clears throat> it looks pretty big though like looks like it'd be like actually no not really it is kind of small i mean i'm looking at the cars next to it as a perspective so like it might just be like a little pick up and go type of thing who knows like maybe they probably won't even have the entire menu on those hubs, like the, the what do they call like the Taco Bell Defy uh, drive-through? I don't know what's gonna be on there. Like, is it gonna be the full menu, just the app menu? What like what is it gonna be selected items? I don't even know. So like that could flop, you know, just because of like what they're gonna have available. Like, what if it is just like a discounted like a uh, you know side bitch type of <laughs> Taco Bell? Like it could be just that, you know. But I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. I definitely will be checking them out if they come to where I live because I'm fat. But uh, yeah, let's let's just hope it's not a not a you know a, a gimmick. I'm like oh, come to the new the floating Taco Bell. Uh, come and get your uh, enchilada. Not not even that. Your crunchy tacos at the floating Taco Bell. All right. Moving on to entertainment. I've been on record on this podcast that I just was kind of in not that interested. In the Eternals world of Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I've you know I, I've been very vocal about my you know what I where I stand on Marvel and how they're gonna uh, you know make up their you know a new you know cinematic phase or whatever they want to call it or whatever. But I guess like what I'm trying to say is like I was not interested in the Eternals when I first saw the trailer. I wasn't very you know sold on it. I wasn't like okay, this is just gonna be like. You know, um, I, I forgot. I forgot what I said. Like another Avengers, or like another people. Like nobody knows about. Like who are these people? What do I care about them? What do they do? Like, and that's it. But after seeing the final trailer that came out, that came out today, I must say <coughs> that I was actually very, very uh, impressed. Uh, number one, because since I don't know who these people are, and it, and it. You know, I don't know, like, who, what's happening or who they're fighting. They can pretty much sell me on anything right now at this point. They can show me crazy visuals, crazy stunts, cr crazy CGI, which is, again, a lot in this trailer. And I might be into it. Like, and that's what happened in this trailer. They went all in on the CGI, the visual effects, the, all the uh, um, all the great shots in it, who they're going to be fighting, what's going to be happening, and I gotta tell you, man, I was in. A, I was so into it, again with the music and everything, with the people that are in it, like uh, Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, Richard Madden. I'm just like I, Kumail Nanjiani. I am so actually, and I can't believe that I'm saying this on the podcast. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the Eternals, because I do think that um, from this trailer, it looks like more of a uh, more of a tone that I would, you know expect out of the, these type of people more serious not as jokey not as uh marvelly if you would say not as uh kitty in a way either it does seem very serious which i dig it does seem uh, uh like there's like a mystery to it like we got to figure out you know okay well like the, in the trailer they said like they're not allowed to you know uh, uh what is it um uh, 
in, in, interfere with any conflict between the human race and you know other people. But again, human race was fighting Thanos, and that was like an alien or another being. So why couldn't they help them out in that point? Um, so I, I don't know. That could be something explained. Uh, but it is intriguing. I, I do want to see more about it. I'm I'm all in. Like like I said, the tone really got me in this trailer. I was sold on it from the like pretty much when it started. I was like, yeah, we're gonna get some good shit in this, man. I'm excited. It's got um, it's got a great cast and like ten new characters that I'm really excited to see about because, again, I mean, what who do we have now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Right, we have Spider Man, Doctor Strange, Wanda, Vision, Captain America now, uh, and uh, Winter Soldier still. No Iron Man though. Um, Hulk, Thor, Guardians. Um, who knows who's going to be Black Panther, how that's going to work out with their uh, loss of Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace, by the way. And, um, yeah, so, like, there, there's going to be some shaking up there, for sure, with these new characters and how they're going to be introduced and how they're going to be involved with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't think that they're going to be, like, heavily big favorites right now because I just feel like that there's so many of them. And that if they're going to want to be able to marry, like, put them all together in one movie, that's just going to be, you know, you thought Avengers Endgame and Infinity War were going to be expensive. Imagine, like, a movie with the Avengers, Eternals, eventually maybe the Fantastic Four. That's going to be, like, even triple that budget from Endgame. <laughs> like, you got to, like, just think about that, man. That's going to be insane. I mean, again, you thought Endgame was big. <laughs> no, it's just going to get even bigger now. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, like, who also knows, like, because we don't really know if, like, they, do they just, like, are they just, like, space aliens? Like, I, again, I don't know what the Eternals are, so, um, like, do they have any implications with the, with the multiverse? Do they have any implications with, um, Wanda, you know, Doctor Strange with the magic on Earth? Like, what's gonna happen there? And, and, you know, I'm saying this because, like, I've been so turned off by Marvel, with Loki, because for one, I'm I'm just not the biggest Loki fan. I never really have been. I've always thought that he was kind of annoying. So it would be, you know, good for me to watch his show so I could potentially not hate him or not find him annoying. But I just, I don't want to, man. Somebody's got to sell me on Loki because I just, the marketing, the trailers have done nothing for me. So I just, I don't want to watch it. Somebody wants, he says it's good. I'll, I might check it out. But like, I don't know, just like, the Loki thing with me, it's just, I, I just don't care for him at all. I, I've never really cared for him, ever. Um, also, like, how is this going to, like, work out? Because I heard, like, uh, Thor is also going to be a big movie. Spider-Man's going to be a big movie. Are they going to connect anyway? Are they going to do the slow build-up that they did in the previous phases where they built up Iron Man, Captain America, and all of them, Hulk, to eventually be the Avengers, like, within a couple years? Are they going to do it more faster, quicker, so that they're not... um you know, I mean, like, as much as I love the first, like, few movies, it did take a little bit of a, you know, while to get to the first Avengers movie, where they all teamed up and all that, and where they all, like, you know, finally were able to fight together and be together and all that, so, like, are they gonna do the same thing like that? I don't know if they can, because, like, we're, I mean, it's already been done before, right? So, like, if it does tend to go that way, and be, like, building up the characters, one movie at a time, maybe another movie, maybe a sequel to this character's first movie. Is it going to be like that, or is it going to be faster? I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like it can't do that, really. Um, because, for also, we have Disney Plus shows that also just feel like longer versions of movies, in a way, if you kind of follow me on that. <clears throat> like, it just feels like a... Like, I remember when one, when uh, WandaVision came out, like, it was just going to be one season, I think. I still think it is just one season. I was just, like, at the end of the, at the, end of the show, like, oh, it's just a big, big MCU movie. And that's all it was, and that was fine. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier was just a big, you know, Marvel movie. Like, that that was it. And that, that can be kind of a, you know, a harsh criticism, but I do feel like in certain ways, like, it just, you know, if, if they're not going to, you know, continue with the... um you know, with more seasons, it's just, like, that's kind of what it is, it just kind of is, is just a big movie, I don't know why, but I just kind of get that feeling, um, again, no disservice to them, they're both, you know, good shows in their own way, um, but I, I just, I get that feeling that it's just going to be, there's a lot of things at play, how to, you know, balance the, with the movies and the TV shows and all that, it's just, it's, it's a lot now, man, it ain't just movies now, so it's just like, who, I mean, I don't know how this is going to work. 
the entire MCU. I'm sure Kevin Feige knows, which is good because that's his job. But if I was him, man, I would not know what to do. I, honestly, I, I, I have no idea how they're going to do this. Like, I am actually stumped. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, internal, uh, the Eternals. I want to see it. I actually, I really want to see it now. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I want to check it out. I, I dig it. I like the tone, the feel, the characters, uh, the situation. I believe the enemies, like that green guy, I don't know his name, but I remember seeing it because I have a Marvel encyclopedia in my bookshelf when I was a kid. I have to check that out to see if, if that was who I thought it was. I, it might, I might be wrong, but I could have sworn I saw like a, a figure, a, a character like that in the encyclopedia. So I have to check that out to see if that was uh, that's who it could be. Um, again, directed by Chloe Zhao, who did uh, a No Man Land. I haven't seen it, but it looks like visually looks pretty good. So I'm I'm guessing like that uh, that helped a lot in this production. Her experience with getting like those massively wide, good looking shots. I'm seeing that a lot in this trailer. I'm liking what I see. I, I gotta check it out. I really do. And you know, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't hit well. At least they're doing something different. Like what I get out of this is like they're doing something different. It almost kind of feels like, in a way, to me, I don't know, in my dumb brain, it just feels like it kind of gives me a Prometheus vibe. If I'm being honest with you, it just it just feels like the with the music and the the shots and all that. It just kind of feels like it's like almost like an alien movie in a way, like with the mystery and all that. It just feels it just feels I don't know. It feels like that. I I could be wrong, but uh, I'm getting Prometheus vibes from that trailer. So, I uh, big up to the uh, congratulations to Marvel again, a good trailer. I, I was skeptical skeptical at first, but now I'm I'm pretty much, you know, on board. Staying in entertainment, talking about video games now. Call of Duty had their event today in Warzone. If you didn't know this, uh, they have like these events in Warzone that you can do a mission, do an assignment, do a scavenger hunt, whatever it does, and then it un unlocks a trailer to the next Call of Duty reveal or the reveal to the next Call of Duty. And in this one, they had like a little train thing. It was actually more of a straightforward uh, uh, event where you just had to blow up a train and then it triggers the event, which is um, it it's a bombing raid by I assume like German bombers that just blow up the uh, Verdance, the Battle Royale uh, map, and then that you enter the trailer. And it, it was a cool event. I enjoyed it. I thought it was better than the other ones because the other ones, again, were just like big hunts and scavengers and, and mysteries. And I did like them. I thought that they were pretty cool how you had to race to like the stadium and all that. But for me, I think that this one, being simple, being to the point, was, you know, not 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 horrible. And also it wasn't like a full lobby either. I think there was like 32 people to that to the the, the war zone lobby, which is a big drastic, you know, uh hit from 150. So, a much uh, smaller event, but nonetheless did its job. Um let's talk about what was revealed. So, what was revealed was that COD Call of Duty is reverting and going back to World War 2. Again, <clears throat> they went back to World War 2. I would say in 20, you know, I want to be right on this because I don't want to be, you know, called out uh, uh, for my information. Um, and I don't want to, you know, trigger anybody, offend anybody of when this game came out because people worked on it. And they, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears onto it. And I don't want to get that wrong. So, here we go. The last World War II game that they made, Call of Duty World War II came out in 2017, and I freak I I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was a good story. The campaign was kind of whack, not that greatest. The camp, uh, not the, the multiplayer. Sorry, the multiplayer. The multiplayer was kind of whack. Bad bad lobbies, bad connection, bad hosting. And, but the the campaign though was amazing. I love that campaign because it had actually a good story between. Uh, the the main the main protagonist his past the characters that he's with in the in the campaign and all that it's actually really good I I recommend you play it because it's actually really well done and it's it's acted well it has Josh Dumal in it if you don't know who that is he's a guy from Transformers he's like the big sergeant uh, the or the soldier guy uh, not not Tyrese Gibson but the other guy he's Tyrese Gibson's uh squad mate in Transformers. Uh, he's he's good in it. It's a good campaign. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's a good it's a good um, 
It's a good run time. It's not too short, not too long. It's just perfect, in my opinion. The campaign really is good. But anyway, the same, I believe the same people who, who made this game, let me just say, yeah, see, developed by Sledgehammer Games, who also is developing the new one called Call of Duty Vanguard, which was, you know, introduced going back to World War II. It looks like we're going to get be getting a, a, it looks like to me we're going to be getting a campaign, which is good because, I mean, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I enjoy having campaigns in video games. I know that might be old school to most people, but I enjoy them. I enjoy playing them because I still enjoy a good, decent story from a game. I just think that it's it's good, that that we shouldn't just abandon the thing that, oh, you can't tell a good story in a game. Yeah, you can. And, and, and you know, not just any game, but, but a first-person shooter. Yes, you can. Y- you absolutely can. You did it with World War II. You can do it again. Anyway, but like, it's it's gonna be like a another you know crack at the World War Two thing. I think that they realized that the multiplayer wasn't that good, wasn't that polished. It was kind of, in a way, it felt like a little bit of a discount Call of Duty. It just it it felt different. It felt off. So I think that they're gonna get another shot at this, and it's gonna be cool. But I want to talk to you about a little bit of what I saw. Was I think we're gonna be getting like a no? We are gonna be getting, and I predicted this before it came out. That I thought when it first you know, the first teaser came out, it showed like it highlighted four characters: a German soldier, an Australian soldier, a Soviet sol- soldier, and an American soldier. And I thought I was talking to my brother, like, "Dude, this has got to be it. They got to be setting up like this multiple campaign story type of thing," because I'm just seeing it all over the place. Like the trailer was like, "See them rise." Like, okay, we're not. This isn't just gonna be campaign and battle royale it's no it's got to be can it's or multiplayer and battle royale it's got to be with the campaign too i just got this feeling and then sure enough we're going to be getting four you know fronts of the war you know western at uh, northern africa uh eastern front and then the pacific so we're going to be getting like all the main fronts of world war ii in the campaign for this game which to me is sick because they haven't done that type of thing in 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 a call of duty you know, World War II setting since World at War, which didn't go that far. It did do the Pacific, and then the uh, and then the Russian campaign, which led to the Battle of Berlin, in that game, I believe. So this is going to be double that, right? We're going to get the Western Front, Eastern, again, like I already said, those fronts, and then it's just I think what's so cool about it is that we're going to be getting, from what I can tell, pretty interesting characters here. Like I just think that, again, like most most Call of Duties. You know, at least the recent ones kind of... Well, Cold War was, you know, decent. It wasn't the best. I actually really like the Modern Warfare one a lot better. But I think that they've been upping their game a bit with, with campaigns. Because I remember that Black Ops 4 didn't have a campaign. Everybody was kind of mad at that because, you know, everybody was like, we want, we want multiplayer. But other people were like, bro, but, like, why would you not make a campaign? Like, why are you, like, not putting that at part of, like, the... The sixty dollar price, because again, the the games are going to be sixty dollars. I also want a campaign. I'm sorry about it, but uh, like, if so many other games can make multiplayer free, and yours doesn't have a multiplayer, but it's still going to be sixty dollars, why is that? You got to put in a campaign. I think that that's a reason why. But also, is like, why would you take that like that creativity and those people that work on the camp the campaign out of the 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 game? Is are you just not making enough money, or or what's happening there? So I think it's good that we're going to get a campaign, but I just really want to see if the multiplayer holds up, if it's better, and how it's going to work in Warzone. Because I'm, I, I, it's, well, from what I'm seeing, this has got to, you know, we're going to be putting in World War II weapons into Warzone. So how is that going to work? Again, we already have like 80 weapons in Warzone, like primary weapons. So like if we add like a... You know, if, if we're going to still have an M4A1, like an actual assault rifle from, like, modern time, up against an M1 Garand, I, I mean, like, that's just going to be stupid, right? So I'm thinking what's going to happen is, like, they got to blow Warzone up. And I mean, quite literally, blow it up. Take out all the Modern Warfare weapons, all the Black Ops weapons, and just make it World War II. You know, I, it's going to be sound, it sounds so stupid, right? But if they're going to be adding, you know, these guns and these perks and these soldiers with the other existing guns and all that wh- i mean i don't understand what why though like it to me it just doesn't seem like it would work like who's gonna pick an m1 garand a thompson or whatever 
over an M4. I just, I don't think anybody is going to. Or, like, an actual machine gun. Like, I don't think that this is going to work if you keep everything else in there. So I'm thinking, like, they, they, these guys got to blow this whole motherfucking game up. They just got to do it. Like, they, they've been they've been adding guns, adding perks, adding attachments, adding all this stuff for, you know, two years now, close to it. it it's just, it's, I think it's just so much for the game now that it just seems like they need to blow it up and make it something new again. Make it new. It doesn't feel new. You know, maybe people don't want to go back to World War II. Like, maybe people don't want to go back to that era. But what if you made, like, a grittier, more realistic, boots-on-the-ground type of uh, 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 battle royale that actually feels grittier? you got to work for it. Maybe just take a little bit of a spin on it. Like, maybe make the map... Maybe you can't traverse the map as much. Maybe some weapons don't reach as far. Maybe you got to get close to people. Maybe you got to change up the tactics. Be a little bit more sneakier. You know. You know. Be strategized better because, it, for, I mean, you can strategize it a lot in Warzone now. But I feel like it's also just like a you can just run up to people and kill them like whatever with anything that you want basically. Rocket launcher, assault rifle, LMGs, whatever you want. You can just kind of do. You can kill everybody with anything pretty much. And it's just like if you limit that, if you put less weapons in less attachments less perks and all that and you make it more about the you know your timing your precision your accuracy it just for me it would be like a a different approach to the battle royale and a different feel of it and a different you know type of grind than the warzone grind that we have because the warzone that we've been playing has pl played pretty similar since it launched i think that people just want another fresh take on it so i think that if you blow this warzone up blow it up put out this new one new feel New look, new way that it moves, new engine, whatever. Then just make it feel, make it, make it different, make it different. Because Warzone is as good as it may be, or as bad as it may be. We want another, th a new type of battle royale, a new feel, a new, I don't know. And I know that's going to be hard for developers to, to, you know, swallow because no one's ever really done that. Fortnite is still like Fortnite, even though they add new things and and uh, new maps and all that. It, it still flows the same, really. So does PUBG, and so does uh, Apex Legends. Like, uh, maybe they just gotta make a different battle royale. Maybe they just gotta make a new. I don't know. I, I like it, it's just it. I don't see how they put World War II guns with modern day guns. I just do not see it. Um, other than less, you know. But besides that, I'm I'm still gonna be. I, I'm still gonna check out the battle royale because that's gonna be free for sure. If I have to buy the multiplayer. I'll buy it if I if I do if the campaign looks good if it's if it's done well I'll probably have to buy it because I I mean again I'm a big World War II buff I enjoyed that time period of learning history obviously the war was fucking terrible but in medium like this in like games and movies I'm gonna fucking eat that shit up I just am <laughs> um so yeah I mean I'm looking forward to that it could be good it could be bad I mean I think I'm more of the positive side of it I'm, I know a lot of my friends are pretty turned off on it my brother is too. But I, you know, it's maybe it's just not for them. Maybe this one's for me more. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll have fun with it. Maybe I'll enjoy it more. Maybe this will be my Call of Duty for next. Maybe what if Battlefield sucks? What if Battlefield for twenty forty two sucks? Maybe what if it could suck? This could be my game. So could Halo. I mean, hey, stranger things have happened, right? I mean, we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. I I think that it could be good, but it also could be really bad. So I, we'll just have to wait until it comes out. By the way, it comes out on November. In November, sorry. If anybody was uh, wondering, November will be the release. Now, to me, it just feels kind of late to be, like, you know, uh, promoting a COD now and already in August. You know, back in the day, they would put it out in, in June with every other game, like everybody else. But, you know, people pulled out of E3 couple years ago they're gonna stick to their guns and be like oh we got this ourselves we got this we'll see about that bud um moving on moving on let's move on to sports everybody's favorite show segment sports yes we're here we're back on sports all right so we're gonna be talking about a couple things in sports this week mainly in the nfl mainly with rookie quarter quarterbacks mainly mainly with uh, um preseason games but one of the bigger stories that came out this past week, and it, for some people it's going to be tragic. For some people it's going to be a relief. In the news today, the I think, you know, no, still the biggest news this week in sports has got to be um, Tim Tebow getting cut from the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
I mean, who didn't see this coming? I want to know somebody who did not see this coming. Tim probably saw this coming. Tim Tebow was like, yeah, I'm going to get cut. Yeah, for sure I am. I'm just, you know, you know I'm going to do it and make some headlines and make it be like all about me and then just get cut because that's exactly what happened. He he played one game in the preseason and, uh, it, it, you, by the way, he wasn't good. Um, he played, you know, if you don't know, he's uh, playing, tried out as a tight end, made it all the way to the preseason game one under Urban Meyer, who was, in fact, his coach at Florida, where he went to college and played for, uh, played for Florida, um, and, like, that was his boy, and everybody kind of thought that, yeah, he's, Urban's going to keep him on the team because that is his boy, and everybody's going to be like, yeah, yeah, everybody expected that Tim Tebow would make the team because Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer are friends. Well, I mean, that's out of the, uh, that's out of the conversation because Tim Tebow has been cut, and I'm kind of mad at him for that. I'm kind of mad because he knew, he had to have known that he was going to get cut. He had to have known that he wasn't going to be able to get that far. But he still tried. He even got a jersey number. You know, he he practiced. He was in like the, in some, you know, training camp highlights. Some people were saying, Tim Tebow catches a ball in, uh, in, in, pre- or in, in training camp and everybody's like, oh yeah, he's going to be good. No, like, come on, Tim Tebow. Listen, I've watched Tim Tebow since he broke out into the NBA or NFL, when he beat the Steelers in the playoffs, I was like, oh my God, this guy is pretty good. After that, utter trash. Absolute garbage. Couldn't throw the ball right. Made poor decisions. Just not accurate. Just not a good player. Not a good, no, a good athlete. Very good athlete at, you know, being in shape and all that. Not a good football player, or not a good quarterback, so I'm sorry. Because, again, they moved him around to other, uh, you know, other teams with the New York Jets the New England Patriots and all that. He was like a slot receiver, a decoy. He ran the ball. He did He did some pathetic shit at other teams because, like, again, the dude is not... He just can't throw in the NFL. I mean, it's just simple. It's just a simple um, thing. And I think that because Urban Meyer was his coach and Urban Meyer, you know, he had him as a quarterback at Florida, that he's like, you know what? I want to prove to people that I didn't fail at coaching him to be a quarterback because he failed so hard in the NFL. He's like, I'm going to give him another chance to be a tight end, yeah, and and, and it was just proven that, yeah, first of all, uh, Tim Tebow's like 34 years old, right, he's not that young anymore, playing tight end, which he's never done, right, tight end, you gotta not only catch the ball, you gotta be able to run routes and block people, like block actual uh, defensive ends, and, you know, possibly line linebackers, or cornerbacks, or anybody, you gotta block defensive men, who their what their job is to do is to break into your offense, and I think that you know seeing that happen and notice noticing that the dude can't block, and is not very athletic at this point in his life because again he is thirty four, you know trying to play a tight end against people who have already you know played tight end since they were like in high school and college, uh, it's just it's not going to be that smooth of a transition. It, it's just absolutely it's it's laughable because. Nobody, again, should have thought that he was going to get that far. Nobody should have thought that because, it, it again, Tim Tebow tried out for every NFL team. He tried out for the Mets. Couldn't even make the Mets, you know, roster. He's just, he isn't the greatest athlete. He's just not. I mean, I, I don't want to seem like I'm, uh, you know, bashing on him, but it's just like, bro, you had it good. You were a TV personality on ESPN. You had a good job. I thought you actually were very good at your job at ESPN. And now you go and try to play for the Jacksonville Jaguars and absolutely get, you get cut. And then you get like, you know, pretty much humiliated. And then it's just like, for what? What was, what was all that for, man? You, you made everybody talk about you. Everybody, everybody in the media was talking about you and you got cut. You weren't even good enough. And you were embarrassing too, by the way. Like embarrassing. I think that this, with this recent cut, you know, recent performance and recent like try at getting on an NFL team that he's he, he he can never try out for any other team again ever because if he can't play tight end or quarterback, there's no way he can. Well, first of all, he can't block, so he can't be on the defense. He he's not athletic enough to run the ball or even catch the ball really. He can't obviously he can't throw the ball. So this has got to be the nail in the coffin, Tim Tebow is done with the NFL, as in playing in the NFL. No more. 
no more, no how. I don't want to hear Skip Bayless say he's still good. He made a couple passes in some training and some practice that he made dime passes. I don't want to hear that, Skip. It's, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm done with Tebow. Stay on TV, man. You had a good job. Probably a very, very good pay. You know, good people around you, good coworkers. You were good at it. You were actually really good at it. Stick to it. Don't humiliate yourself again. Because I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear, hear people talk about it. Stephen A., Skip, Shannon Sharp, Max Kellerman. I don't hear that anymore. I really, really, really don't. It's over. It's overplayed. I feel like I'm back in 2015. What's going on here? It's over, dude. I mean, I mean, I know that's going to be hard for you to accept because you believe in you and you should always believe in you. Like, always. Like, forget what I fucking said. I'm an idiot, right? Like, don't judge yourself on me. But just know that we're going to see this and we're going to be like, bro, I mean, it's been over, dude. And I know that you don't want it to be over. I know that. I know that. But it's just, uh, it's too much, too much bad, I don't know, I don't want to say bad word, but too much bad light on your sporting career in, in professional sports. I mean, maybe just hang him up. Hang him up. Be done with it. Enjoy your life. I mean, I mean you're, you're you're rich. You get paid well. Come on. You don't gotta be playing sports. You don't you don't gotta be getting sweaty on the on the field, in the dugout, whatever. You don't you don't gotta be doing that, man. You you, you really don't. It's you're 34 too. It's you're you're good. You're fine. You're gonna live life happily. You got a good job. You, you're going to get your job back, by the way. And they're going to be like, so, Tim, how were those tryouts? Well, man, I mean, they didn't go as well, but, you know, but God is on my side. This is, was his plan. Was it not his plan before to, to get cut? But he, was that not his plan when you already when you joined ESPN? And they're like, oh, no, it's God. I'm going to try again. Because his tweets are so filled with, you know, I'm not trying to bash, you know, Christianity. I am a Roman Catholic. But I'm just saying, like, no, we say that it's God's plan, and it's like I'm gonna defy God's plan and try again. Like, what? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Um. Anyway, that was some Tim Tebow news. I thought I had to get it out there because you know that was one of the bigger sporting stories this week. Him getting cut, and I, I gotta say, I was kind of relieved. I don't want to see that him getting outplayed that much, that bad on. On football Sundays, I just I don't want to see that. I mean, I don't want to hear people laugh about it too. Because if he does, if he did make the team and he got lit up every game or well, every games that he played, if Urban Meyer just let him slide on through and just said like you're not good, but I'm gonna keep you because I like you, man. First of all, that'd be fucking stupid, because that's not why you you know have people on your team. You do because that they can perform their job, they can play the game, and that they they <laughs> that they can actually make plays and contribute to the team. Urban Meyer. I'm not saying that you did that because, you know, you have you have favorites, but I'm just saying that if you did that and everybody's like, why is he on the team? Like, he's actually really good. He's shown some things in, in practice. It's like, bro, uh, we also have reporters and, and, uh, and media at practice. Like, that's like, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> you can't, like, you can't say he's had a good day at practice because we can find those videos we can find like uh, social media works you know <laughs> there's people that and also there's fans at the those practices sometimes especially at training camp like you're not gonna get that far saying that he's he's done some things in practice that uh we're excited about like no that's not gonna work in 2021 i'm sorry about that but but um yeah i mean thank god it's over thank god it, it didn't need to come back though this didn't need to happen uh tim and urban god um but you know god's plan so, um, let's move on. We're going to talk about uh, the rookie quarterbacks that are in the league today that have been impressing your boy here. Imp- impresses is, shouldn't be a big thing with rookie quarterbacks because they are brought on to be the future. They're not here to make an Im- imminent impact, impact, like an immediate impact, my bad. But they're there to be, you know, the 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 blueprints for the the rookie quarterback his job is really to watch the veteran quarterback 
do their job and they, they are supposed to mirror that as much as they can and learn from them as much as they can. So when if, if the day comes where that person either retires or gets traded, that that person can step up and be the starting quarterback of that NFL team. And there's a couple teams that, in my opinion, should be starting those quarterbacks. Uh, number one being Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears. I thought that he had a good game. He was a bit shaky. He did turn the ball over a couple times, which is expected. Again, his first preseason game against, uh, uh, the, I, think, I believe it was, who was it? Gosh, I'm blanking on the name. I believe it was Miami. And then, uh, I believe it was Miami. Let me let me just check on that real quick. Yes, it was. So they played the Miami Dolphins, and they won 20-13. to 13. I mean, he had a big bomb touchdown that was like maybe like 40-some yards or something like that. He had a, go- a lot of good passes at the end of the day. He ran well. He strikes more. He strikes me more as a, a throw first quarterback. I think that I also think that he has legs that he also is not afraid to show that he can he can run the ball. But I think that I, in the, for the majority of the time, I think that they're going to be uh, showing him. You know, they want him to throw the ball. I think I would say that they want him to throw the ball and just not run all the time because. Running quarterbacks, to me, in my opinion, are just like one-trick ponies. Like, if you if you think that it's, first of all, it's easier to run the ball than throw the ball. So, like, why would you, you know, if you're a coach or an offensive coordinator, why would you pick something that's harder for the quarterback to know? Like, why would you go with throwing in when you can just run the whole thing the whole damn time? Um, and the day you just want to win the game. So, like, I think that if they just think that uh, you can just run all the time, like, no, we don't want that. We just throw the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like. Don't be a one-trick pony. Just like people are going to expect that you can run. They've seen that you can run. Don't run because they know that you can run. Throw the ball better, um, or try to throw the ball better. Um, but yeah, he looks good. I just think that with the Chicago Bears situation, with him, uh, Andy Dalton, Nick Foles, I think that you just got to start Justin Fields because that fan base and that franchise, uh, that team is just boring without him. Like honestly, I'm just going to say it flat out. We've seen enough of Nick Foles and Andy Dalton to know what they're going to bring to the table, right? They're going to bring good drives, bad red zone percentage, and just, you know, keep the ball, but also turn the ball over, you know, whether that be on downs or interceptions. I just don't see any of those guys making the Chicago Bears a threat. They just don't have it in them. Like, I I, I don't know how much more I got to see Andy Dalton be Andy Dalton. I don't think I, like, what are you thinking in Chicago? No, you start Justin Fields. You get that guy up there because, first of all, nobody's seen him in, in you know, in in the in the NFL. Nobody knows how he, he's going to play, really. I mean, yeah, a couple, like a couple of preseason games, maybe, but that's not enough. You put that guy in there because, number one, he was your number one draft pick. The quarterback of the future is what everybody's saying, right? He's going to be the quarterback of the future. So, fuck what you guys are saying about Andy Dalton and Nick Foles. And Nick Foles. Just start him. He's going to be better for your franchise, better for your fan base, and just boost up that energy because I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, without him, it's just, I don't know. It, I don't think it's going to be a good season with Andy Dalton. If, if I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. I know that he's going to be, he's got to be mentored, he's got to be coached, he's got to be learn the game, but I think you got to learn by a baptism of fire. You really got to. Justin Fields seems like a tough guy. Like a really tough guy that he can actually get in there, learn the routes, learn how to, learn how the game works, and just go with it. Just let him go, man. I'm just gonna say, it's gonna be very, very, very boring for Chicago Bears fans if they walk out, you know, if they go this entire season with Andy Dalton or Nick Foles as their quarterbacks. It's gonna be very boring. Whether that is, you know, leads to wins or losses, it's going to be boring, I guarantee you. I don't think that, you know, Andy Dalton has what it is, what it takes. I could be completely wrong when they when they actually play the games, but I've seen so much of Andy Dalton, and I think his best years are behind him. He was great in Cincinnati when he first got there, and then when he was dwindling out of his career or out of his time there, he just got worse and worse. I'm just saying. He did. There's no looking back on that. Another person who might be taking the, the the job is Mac Jones over Cam Newton. Now, in my opinion, Cam Newton is a is a freak talent. He's a great quarterback when he's in Carolina, because when he was on that run to the Super Bowl, mark my word, he wasn't like in his first year. He was like his maybe in his like fourth or fifth year, I think, maybe maybe even third. 
but he wasn't like his first year or second year when nobody knows about him. Right? He took some time. He took some losses, some me- mediocre seasons, mediocre performances. But that season when him went when he went to the Super Bowl with the Broncos, up up until that game, he was amazing. He was great. He was running. He was throwing. He was doing it all. And then as soon as he lost that game, it has never been the same with Cam Newton. It has never been the same. He has been in a shell of himself. I feel like he's trying to burst out of that shell still, but he just can't get that confidence that he had during that run in 2015. I just I, I don't see old Cam Newton. I, I just don't. I just see like this scared, timid. He's always thinking about overthinking things and just overthrows, underthrows, misses guys completely, makes a bad decision. I just I don't see it now with Cam Newton. And I haven't for some time. You know, after he, you know, they lost that game or the Super Bowl, he's just never been the same to me. He's just never been the same. And I worry about him. I really do because he had it. But now it's just like in this, he's like in a free fall. And it's just getting worse and worse. Like last year, I know he got like COVID and all that and he was injured. But like he just did not perform that well. And I was just like, wow. With, with Even with like, you know, Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels, this should work, but it's not. It's like, what is going on here? They're running the ball so much when he's, you know, he can run, but he's not like the fastest as he used to be. I don't know, man. It's just, I, I don't think that Cam Newton is all there, man. I just think he's just kind of lost. I, I don't know. I, it pains me to say that because I was a big fan of Cam Newton back when he was at Ar- Auburn and when they beat Oregon. I was just like, dude, this guy's going to be awesome. He's got a he's got a great personality, great smile. He looks like he's fun to talk to. He's a great quarterback. This is going to be awesome. And he got to the Super Bowl, and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm rooting for Cam Newton. He lost him. Like, I'm still on your back, man. But he just got worse and worse and worse. I was like, oh, my God. What's happening here? How did this happen? How did this happen? Does he know what's going on? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know what's happening. I don't want to say, like, he's depressed or whatever. I just think that he's in his own head. Like, like, like everybody could be. But this has just been, like, going on for, like, maybe three years. It's like, bro, come on. Let's, let's get it going. Anyway. That was another one. Uh, I think that he's just... Mac Jones could potentially be the starter, even though he didn't look that great. I'll be honest with you. He looked shaky at the start. But again, with the most of these quarterbacks, they get better as the game goes on, which is, you know, fair enough to say. Also, Trey Lance looked uh, pretty decent as... You know, if you don't know who, don't know who that is, it's a 49ers first-round draft, draft pick. Uh, Trey Lance, their quarterback, and he looks good. He might be, you know, he also... He could be the starter... If Jimmy Garoppolo gets were to get hurt, or they just say, like, you know what, Jimmy G, you're not the guy. Uh, Trey Lance is our guy. We're going to go with this guy. So I feel like the possibilities of these quarterbacks, uh, they, they could be starting. Uh, Justin Fields, uh, Trey Lance, and we know uh, that... Um, no, 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 not Justin, sorry. Um, Mac Jones and uh, Trey Lance could be starting. Justin Fields might not, but that would that would disappoint me a lot. But also, it might make Matt Nagy happy, just to say that because he, these coaches also just want to flex on their knowledge of the quarterback. Like you're not even a quarterback or a coach, you're not even a good coach at that. that. They want to flex their oh well, that never happens in the NFL. We never put any you know rookie quarterback in there because he can't do it. Bullshit, man. Have you seen that guy? He's tough as fuck. He had broken ribs in that one game and kept playing piece of shit anyway um anything else what what else did i see oh fucking sam wilson or uh, no zach wilson sorry that guy looks like uh, just like a, a basic average quarterback at best he's going to be starting for the new york jets because they got nobody else right uh, um sam darnold left for the carolina panthers he's gone he's going to be starting for the jets i feel like zach wilson is going to be uh, an, another Daniel Jones of New York. Daniel Jones is very basic. He can be good at some points. He's at, He has been good at some points, but also nothing really excites me about his game. He does. He, he just. He feels like a lower level, a very basic tiered Peyton Manning, if that makes sense. Peyton Manning had that, you know, that the 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 football first, football only, which I do like. But I feel like if football is all you know, football is all you do, you should be at the level of Peyton Manning. Now I know Daniel Jones is still like in his gonna be in his third year and all that, and he's still got some time. But I, I just I get that feeling with 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 Zach Wilson that he's just gonna be a boring quarterback with not much flair, 
not much uh, personality, which again is fine, you know, as long as you win the games, it's fine. But I just feel like he's going to be a lesser Daniel Jones because again, Daniel Jones has been in the league for a while and he's been the, the, the Giants guy for a while. But I feel like with Zach Wilson, it might be another repeat of that, which, you know, could be a good thing for the Jets because the last thing that they need is a. Is a is a is a is a flashy quarterback that's going to be like all about himself and all about his team, um, or it should be all about the team and, and nothing else. Uh, I just I just kind of get a boring vibe out of Zach Wilson. I could be wrong. I don't know. All I know is that he's he's fucking he's he's he tried to pay his mom off, which was if you if you don't know, his mom is on Instagram and she's been getting a lot of attention, a lot of followers, a lot of you know, light on her, and, like, he's, like, saying, Mom, please get off Instagram because you're creating a distraction <laughs> in my professional NFL career, which is, like, she she declines, so she's, like, no, I can handle it, you worry about yourself, you worry, I'll worry about me, which is always kind of weird, because whenever a family member of the quarterback or is, is ta- getting a lot of attention and not, and the quarterback isn't, there's a little bit of a problem there. Because you also don't want to get your mom to get the wrong attention. Just implying that she's a mother. Some people are already going to make some some comments about her that I will not say. That Zach Wilson's going to find unwelcome, and it's not just him, but his whole family. <laughs> so you got to be you. I would I'd say like Zach, pay your mom, give your mom anything that she wants. Get her off Instagram, please. This is not going to add well if you if you get that stuck in your head and you're like, oh, I can't stop thinking about these people that want to fuck my mom. Not saying that that's what they're saying, but if it does get to that, it could be it could get very ugly. I'm just saying, man, I wouldn't have your mother on Instagram, you know, taking away spotlight from you. Um, but yeah, I guess keep your mom off Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it, man. That's gonna do it for this episode. That's gonna do it for the show this week. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for watching. I'm going to make an announcement right now. I think when football season starts, everybody, I think when football season starts, I'm going to release the podcast a little bit earlier. And what I mean by that is I might release it on Wednesday instead of Thursday. I Because I want to watch all the games that I can, and at least for football season, and then, you know, break try to break as much as I can down the following week after we've seen all the games. So I'm kind of contemplating right now in my head if I should move the dates of the podcast from from Thursday to Wednesday. I'm not, you know, I'm not certain on that yet, but I'm thinking about it. I have been thinking thinking about it. If you've made it to the end of this podcast, I would like you to, you know, maybe have some feedback, make a comment on YouTube, make a uh, uh, write a review on uh, Apple Podcast, listen on Spotify and on Apple Podcast. View on YouTube and make a comment, subscribe, like, share. I don't know what else you can do there, but do all that. Again, you can find this podcast on Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. And I will see you next week.